Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to our viewers. Whether you are joining us on Zoom, um, Facebook, I believe, is having uh, some technical difficulties, or YouTube. We are in the virtual company of Dr. Siddiqui. Dr. Siddiqui, welcome to you, sir. Thank you. Now, whenever we think, whenever we begin to start a new Islamic year, we immediately think about that historic journey, the Hijra. Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and his trusted friend, his constant companion, Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, both set out together on a difficult and dangerous journey. But what was happening in Mecca before the Hijra? Dr. Siddiqui, explain to us the events and the situation in Mecca before the Hijra. How did the, how did the circumstances become so desperate that Allah's Messenger had to leave his beloved city? Share the backdrop of those circumstances, if you will. Paint a picture for us. Thank you. Yeah, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nawala. Rabbi shahli sadri wa yassili amri wa ahlulu qudatan min lisani yafahu qali. So we are in the year 1442 of the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallam. And... Uh, just a few minutes, few things that I would like to say about this uh, counting of the of the year. Uh, it is started in the time of Umar radiallahu anh, because uh, they had no uniform calendar how to refer to the year. What happened in what year? They did not know. They used to do that by some events such as you know Amul Fil, the year of the elephant. When the elephant army of Abraha came to attack Mecca, they call that uh, the year of the elephant. Or when the Prophet ﷺ wife and uncle died, uh, that year was known as Amul Huzn, the year of the grief. So that's the way how the certain important events uh, happen, and they will uh, date the time from that uh, event. Uh, but then in the time of Umar radiallahu anh, the the Islamic uh, state expanded and a large area came under the Islamic rule. So the question was, how should we use our calendar? Should we use the calendar that was the Gregorian calendar, something like that? Although the Gregorian calendar was not final also at that time. So the question was how we should use. So Sahaba, they sat down and uh, they decided together some, and, uh, some suggested we start counting our calendar uh, from the birth of the Prophet ﷺ, just as Christians do. Some say that we should count calendar from the date that the Prophet received the revelation at the age of 40, 620, uh, 611. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ received the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So some suggested that date, some suggested the date of uh, Battle of Badr, which was a very decisive battle. And some suggested uh, uh, the time of the victory of, uh, of Mecca. That means the Prophet returned to Mecca and uh, captured, recaptured the city of Mecca. All these suggestions came, but then uh, the consensus was that uh, let us uh, use the time of Prophet's migration. Hijra from Mecca to Medina. At that time, Medina was known as Yasrib. So from Mecca to Yasrib, which became after the Hijra, became known as Medina, Medina to Nabi, the Medina city of the Prophet So the question is, the, what led to that? Why the Prophet and his companions had to leave Mecca? Well, you know that Rasulullah received the message of Allah. The message was the message of Tawheed. There is only one God, and the Arabs used to have many gods. They used to worship idols. And so many of them, they did not like that. The Prophet preached his message for the first three years quietly among his uh, close friends and family members. And some of them accepted Islam. 
and then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala commanded him to declare the message openly to public, and the Prophet presented the message to the public, and there was opposition. Uh, the Arabs they did not like that. They say that uh, he's changing the religion of our forefathers. Uh, he's saying that Lat and Manat and Uzza, all of these are not gods and goddesses. Uh, they are uh, just something that made up by the people. And uh, the real God is one God. So they kind of, uh, and also he criticized some of their practices. They used to bury their daughters alive. Ba'dul Banat, as we call it, little daughters when they were born. They used to bury them, and uh, they used to consider it a shameful thing to have daughters. And they used to commit uh, sins, they used to drink, they used to gamble, they used to uh, take away the, the, uh, the orphan's property, uh, widows were not respected and honored, uh, all of these kind of uh, things. That's why the whole period is known as Jahiliya, the period of ignorance. So when he preached the message of Tawheed, the message of prayers and purity and goodness, uh, people, uh, some people liked it and they accepted it. And then some other they did not like. He also criticized uh, the discrimination uh, based on color, based on uh, gender, uh, the mistreatment of the slaves. Uh, he spoke about all those things. And so social reform that the Prophet wanted, a religious reform the Prophet wanted, and they did not like that. So they started, some people accepted the message, and those who accepted the message, especially those who were from the slave background, and those who were young people, they were persecuted. And when the persecution increased, uh, then uh, in the fifth year of Prophet's uh, declaration of his message uh, the Prophet allowed his companions to migrate to Abyssinia, Habasha. That was the first Hijra. Uh, Habasha was uh, only for a, a small number of people went there, about 80 people. Uh, it was really an asylum, taking asylum in another country. The Prophet told them <coughs> that Habasha had a king and a Jashi, and he is uh, a fair-minded person, a just person, and you will not be mistreated in his land. So they, were, they, had, they had a system, they had a government, they had a king, so the idea was not to take over, the idea was to just to find asylum and uh, live peacefully in that area. And after some time, they, some of them, they returned to Mecca. Some of them stayed a little longer, but some of them returned to Mecca. Uh, the, the people of Mecca, then they found that Muslims migrated from Mecca to Abyssinia. They were very upset, very angry. And then they decided to have a social boycott for the Muslims who were in Mecca against the Prophet and his family and other people. And they decided that nobody should buy anything from them. Nobody should sell anything to them. Nobody should talk to them. So it was excommunication, it was uh, sanctions eh, against the, this community. Uh, that continued for about three years, it was a very difficult time. Uh, some people um, I mean, starved to death because of that. They did not find food, they had nothing. All those, uh, some good-minded people, fair-minded people, they used to give them a little something that could make them survive. And this three months of, uh, yeah, of difficulty, I mean, three years of difficulty, uh, made uh, the wife of the Prophet Khadija very, very weak. She got sick. And also his uncle Abu Talib got very sick. And uh, the embargo, the sanctions were lifted, but uh, uh, they died after that. So that was the, 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 the year of the grief for the Prophet Sallallahu after that, the Prophet went to Taif to seek help of the people of Taif and to give them his message, the message of Tawheed. But the leaders of Taif, they refused to listen to him and actually they asked some young people to go and throw stones upon him. And the Prophet returned very disheartened. 
and he was in Mecca looking for some place where he could go and where he find a good place to present his message and uh, organize life for the people. Uh, during that time, he met some people from Yasrib. Yasrib is about 300 miles north of Mecca, which is now known as Medina. Uh, so this group of people from Yasrib came and the Prophet met them just by chance and spoke to them about himself. He spoke about his message. They liked it and uh, immediately they accepted Islam. Immediately they said, yes, uh, we've been hearing about uh, from our Jewish neighbors, they were talking about this, uh, somebody is going to appear towards uh, the end of days and uh, maybe this is the Prophet. So they accepted the Prophet and they said that we are going to go back to our city and speak to other people and uh, we uh, will bring some other people. And they did that. <coughs> they present the message of Islam to their people and many of them accepted Islam and they wanted to come and meet the Prophet ﷺ. So that's called the Bayatul Aqaba as the pledge at Aqaba, the second pledge at Aqaba. So here we have about 75 or 80 people. They met the Prophet ﷺ and they listened to him and they pledged their allegiance to him and accepted Islam and they said, we'll support Islam they support you. And actually they said, you, we, we invite you to come to our city. You are having difficulty here, come to our city. Let your followers come to our city. We'll uh, respect everybody. We'll, we'll provide them whatever you can provide. We'll protect them as we protect our families. So you are very welcome, come. And Rasulullah well was very pleased with this, um, with this kind of invitation with this openness, with generosity of the people of uh, Yathrib. And he said to his Sahaba, uh, go, migrate to, uh, to Yathrib. And many of them, they migrated. But he himself did not go because he uh, was waiting for the permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the Prophet is uh, uh, commissioned by Allah to do, so he cannot move without permission. Like Yunus alayhi salam, he left his city without the permission. So you know the story what happened to Yunus alayhi salam. The Prophet wanted to follow the instructions from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he waited. And uh, meanwhile, when the people of Mecca, they saw that the people are leaving Mecca and going to, to, to Yasrib, north, uh, they become upset. Not because they liked Muslim uh, or they wanted them to, to be with them, but they did not want them to go somewhere and become uh, strong and become organized. Uh, they were afraid that uh, they will go in, a, in, in another place and maybe they become, uh, they collect all the people, all the followers, and then Prophet Muhammad joined them and then they become a strong group and uh, other tribes in the neighborhood will become part of that. And Medina was, uh, Yasrib was uh, on the way to their caravan route from uh, Mecca to Syria. And uh, the people of Mecca were the business people. They used to take caravans for trade purpose from Mecca to Yasrib, I mean from Mecca to Syria. And they used to stop at Yasrib uh, uh, and some food and some water or something for their camels and they continue and sometimes even sell things and purchase things from there. So it was a very important uh, um, station where they stopped. So they did not like to see a, 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 an opposing group, a hostile group toward them or they are actually they are the one who are hostile to them uh, in that place. So they were very concerned about that. So they thought that the Prophet would also go and uh, he, they, had, they, they had to stop him and they would not let him go to, to, to Yathrib. Uh, so they sat down and had consultation among themselves what to do with him. 
to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَإِذْ يَمْكُرُ بِكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيُسْبِتُوكَ وَيَقْتُلُوكَ وَيُخْرِجُوكَ وَيَمْكُرُونَ وَيَمْكُرُ اللَّهِ When it is mentioned in Surah At-Tawbah, that the disbelievers were making a plot uh, to either arrest you, that means the Prophet, or to kill you, or to expel you. So the, the, in the Sira, if we learn the details that this uh, group of people who sat down, these are the elders of Makkah, these are the leaders of Makkah, and they uh, sat down and somebody said, um, we should arrest him, put him in a, in a house arrest in some place. And uh, somebody said, but how long are you are going to do that? Uh, maybe some other people will come and release him. So then they said, uh, let us uh, expel him uh, to make him blindfolded and uh, put him on a camel or on, on a horse and take him to a different direction, not towards uh, north, not towards Medina, but to south or east or west somewhere. Take him and drop him in that place, far away, that so he will not know where he is and he will not be able to go back, go, go to Medina. So, uh, but then somebody said, well, this man is very influential. Wherever he <coughs> would be, he would create uh, followers. Because people will follow him. And you know, uh, very soon he might come back and uh, this will happen. So, <coughs> somebody said, well, why don't you kill him? And, uh, but then they said, if you kill him, his uh, family, his, his clan, uh, they will become against us and we'll have a civil war in our city and we don't want to have that. So we have to do something else. Uh, they said, uh, well, this is the only way. What we should do, we should collect uh, uh, from various families of Mecca. We should have uh, um, one person or two person from each family and they all gather together and surround his house and together they attack him so that uh, all people, all families join in killing him. And then his clan, Bani Hashim, they will not be able to fight everybody. So what we do, we collect some money and give them. So that will be blood money that we'll be giving to, the, to Bani Hashim. And in this way, we'll not have a fight and we'll also get rid of him. So with this plot, they were making a plot and Allah has his own secret plan. So they, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, informed the Prophet So They decided to go to surround his house during the night and they would attack him. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the Prophet that this is what is uh, going to happen. And this is what they are trying to do. And asked him to leave his house the Prophet ﷺ was very concerned that because he had some valuables that belonged to his enemies, because he was an honest person, he was a trustworthy person, so some of the valuables were in his house. And these are the amanat. The Prophet did not want to leave uh, abandoning their amanat, even though they were his enemies, but he was concerned about that. So he asked Ali, his cousin, and he asked him, uh, stay in my house, sleep in my bed. And in the morning, return those things to the people. And he said that uh, Allah is protecting me and Allah will protect you. So don't worry, sleep. And Ali said, I had a very comfortable sleep because of the assurance that uh, the Prophet gave him. And then uh, the Prophet uh, uh, quietly left the house and uh, he uh, recited some verses from the Quran uh, and then uh, that is uh, uh, and said that uh, that is uh, they will not be able to see and, and they were sleeping because that group of people they came they were in, in sleep and the Prophet quietly left and went to his uh, friend Abu Bakr's house and he told him that Allah has allowed me to migrate also. Now Abu Bakr said, but what about me? Because he was uh, 
He wanted very much to accompany the process, no? the person, the you will be my companion. And Abu Bakr was very happy and so happy that uh, out of his happiness, the tears came in his eyes. Uh, so the process of them and Abu Bakr, that's how they left. So that's what uh, happening in Mecca. That was a short uh, description of uh, the situation. And that's what made the Prophet leave the city of Mecca. He loved Mecca. Actually, when he was leaving the city of Mecca, he looked at it, he says, the, uh, Mecca, I love you. And uh, you are the city of uh, Prophet Ibrahim, I, I would not leave this city uh, unless your people have, uh, is the one who are making me leave. So they are the one who pushed him. They are the one who uh, they are the one who expelled him from there because of their behavior, because of their way of uh, treating him. And that's why he had to leave uh, and go and make the hijrah, make this migration. Thank you. Dr. Siddiqui, explain to us, we, we hear... That's a little long, long answer for you. Eh? Was it? <laughs> Thank you. Um, talk to us about this concept of hijrah, its relevance. Yeah, thank you. Hijra means uh, Hijra has two meanings. One is the moving from one place to another, migration. Uh, from your place, from your town, from your native place, you go to some other place, it's called migration. Uh, so immigration, emigration, all of this, you have that from that. That Hijra. Another meaning of Hijra is metaphorical meaning. And that is turning away from someone, turning away from some, some thing, some action, or some person. So Allah SWT says in the Quran that Wasbir alama yaquluna wahjurhum hajran jamila. That is, your enemies, those, the people who are opposing you, you be patient on what they are saying and leave them nicely. Wahjurhum, and don't pay attention to them, by God, them. don't speak to them. So, that's Hajj. So Hajj is leaving someone or leaving something. Uh, the Prophet said in one of the hadiths, Al Muhajir man Hajra man Allah. Muhajir is the person who leaves what Allah has forbidden. So Muhajir is not only an immigrant who leaves the city, but if someone leaves something, bad things leaves, bad habits leaves, uh, sin leaves, and does something good. That's also a kind of hijra. So they are hijra in the metaphorical sense and hijra in the physical sense, the spatial sense, that from space, from place to place. And uh, hijra is um, a, a spiritual concept. Uh, you have in the Quran that uh, Allah SWT mentioned about Ibrahim alayhi salam, inni muhajirun ila rabbi. I'm making a hijra for my Lord towards my Lord. So Ibrahim salam left his, to, his, his, his home, his native land, and migrated. And from there, from Ur, he went to, um, to Jerusalem, and then from there he went to Egypt, and then he came uh, towards um, to Mecca. All of these different journeys that he did, that was the Hijrah of Ibrahim salam, the Hijrah of Musa salam. Musa alayhi salam made hijra also. Uh, he left uh, Egypt uh, to Median, uh, stayed there for some time, and then after that he returned. So that was the hijra. But Prophet Sallallahu the hijra was a unique hijra. His hijra was not just uh, going and uh, a refuge, taking a refuge in some place or taking a shelter in some place. The Prophet Sallallahu when he made his hijra, he made the hijra to uh, to do some work for the cause. And that's why he became busy immediately after arriving in Medina, he became busy in reforming the society, uh, making uh, the society a peaceful society, a good society. So we can talk about that, inshallah. So are you here? Uh, you have any questions after that? Or otherwise I can continue talking about uh, what the Prophet did when he made the Hijrah. Uh, 
Yes, please continue. Talk to us a little bit about what were some of the immediate challenges in Medina? And then, of course, the. The Hijrah of the Prophet was in the year 622. That means he uh, was in Mecca 40 years. Then Allah SWT appointed him as his prophet. And then he preached the message for 13 years in Mecca uh, from 611 to 622, about 13 years. And then in 622, he migrated. He left Mecca towards um, um, Yasrib. And when the Prophet arrived there, uh, the city became known after that as Medina to Nabi, the city of the Prophet. Medina has other names also. It is called Taiba, it is called Darul Hijra, the place of Hijra. It is also the nice city, good city, Taiba and Taba. So these are the names of the city. Um, it is the city in which there were uh, uh, some Jewish tribes were living. And then, of course, the Arabs, Aus and Khadraj were the main tribes of Arabs. They were there, and um, uh, they had uh, difficult relations with each other. So there was a lot of uh, intertribal wars, I mean, fightings, and commotions and difficulties. So the, the, the leaders of, of Medina, they were very concerned about that. That's why when they came to meet the Prophet in Mecca, they said, we are having a trouble in our city. And we hope that you will bring peace in our city. You hope you will, do, you will reconcile people. And so Prophet came to Medina while there was uh, clashes, there were difficulties and problems between Aus and Khadraj. And the people of Medina, especially the, the Arab tribes of Medina, they appointed him as the leader, as the head uh, who can uh, resolve their problem. So Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, helped the, the people bring peace in their city. And um, he, um, when he arrived there, um, he, uh, he stayed in a, uh, at the guest house as somebody at Abu Ayyub Ansari's home. And uh, very close to his home, uh, he purchased a piece of land. And he himself paid for that. And uh, it was uh, that land that was made after that a, a masjid. So Masjid al Nabi, وسلم, the Masjid of the Prophet وسلم, was built on that land. And the Prophet وسلم, himself. Uh, were carrying the bricks and sahaba, companions of the Prophet with him, and they um, put a nice, uh, humble, simple structure. That was the first masjid. So and the so first thing that he did in Medina was to establish a masjid. And in the masjid also, he um, at one of the corners of the masjid, uh, he had a school for, uh, for uh, children, for young people, for his companions. I mean, anybody who wanted to come and learn, uh, they used to come to that school. And the Prophet was their teacher. He used to teach them. He used to teach them uh, Quran. He used to teach them the message of Islam, of Islamic ethics. Some people used to stay there day and night. And some people of Medina used to bring some food for them uh, or some fruits for them, dates or grapes. And they used to, to take that. Otherwise, they will spend their time in learning and, and uh, uh, getting education. That's why a, a large number of people became the leaders of the community by attending the classes there in that masjid. So establishing the masjid, establishing the school, uh, these are some of the very important things that was done, that was done in the city of Medina. And the Prophet also gave them a, a, a document that was prepared and that was called Mithaq Medina, Medina Covenant. Medina Covenant was an agreement that the Prophet gave them. And this agreement was that is the, the Jewish people, the, 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 the pagans, 
the mushrikeen and the muslims so these are the three groups they all have to live together um, in peace and uh, if there is any dispute they will bring the dispute to the prophet sallam for the resolution and the jewish people will be will be free to practice their religion they will not be forced to convert to islam uh, they can live by their faith if they want to or if they want to join islam they can join islam so misak madina was a, a, a wonderful document and we still have that it's a historic document um, many historians muslims and non muslims recognize the authenticity of this document and it is available in the books of sira of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, one of the great scholars of india <coughs> dr hamidullah he wrote a book and he called that the first written constitution in the world this was a constitution for the city city state of medina so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought the people together brought the people uh, and gave them the way to live together in peace and harmony Uh, as long as uh, the people lived in peace and harmony they were there but when the trouble came and some of them they turned away from that uh, then of course uh, uh, they were asked to leave and not only that but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam also uh, made sure and the city is clean it is mentioned in uh, sahih al-bukhari that uh, when uh, this Uh, people came to medina some of the sahaba became sick they had fever and uh, abu bakr radhiyallahu anhu was sick bilal radhiyallahu anhu was sick and aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha prophet sahib she says that she went to see her father abu bakr and he was uh, she had a very um, a heavy fever and he um, but thinking that he may not survive he may not live so he was saying things in his fever and then she went to see abu abilal radhiyallahu anhu and bilal also had a fever and bilal was uh, longing for the city of makka and he was saying that may allah curse udba ibn rabia shayba ibn rabia umayya ibn khalaf these are the leaders and umayya ibn khalaf was his master who used to persecute him Uh, when he accepted islam so let me allah have curse on these people because they are the one who who made us leave our city and come to the city of uh, waba <laughs> of the city of uh, pandemic huh? or, or epidemic uh, so he said this is this is the city of waba and aisha says uh, we came to medina and it was wahiya oba ardillah it was uh, the city that's full of diseases for it so it was a unclean city and the sahaba came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they said ya rasulullah make dua ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked them to clean the city and also he made dua he said allahumma habbib ilaina almadina kama habbabta ilaina makkah o ashad wallah make madina beloved to us as you have made makkah beloved to us or even more <laughs> make medina even more beloved to us than makka and then he said oh allah barik lana fi muddiha wa fi sa'iha oh allah bless us in its food in its measurements and oh allah sahiha lana and make the city of medina healthy city uh, sahiha lana made uh, and and remove its uh, its waba from there and remove, remove its uh, its, uh, its uh, diseases from the city and he asked the sahaba to make the city clean so the city was clean and then he asked them to um, to to cultivate the land the lot of land was uncultivated cultivate the land and if you cultivate some vacant land it will become yours so many people were they became involved in that cultivation and he helped them to um, uh, and asked them to dig wells it is mentioned that there were uh, 50 wells that were prepared during that time so there was enough good water clean water in the city and uh, also um, schools were established for the education of young people 
uh, one of the scholars said that there were nine schools that were established in the time of the Prophet in Medina. There was uh, uh, the Prophet also uh, um, encouraged them to do business, agriculture, and, and, and business as well, trade. And so they had enough, enough food for themselves, and not only for themselves, but uh, wherever there was a need in the neighboring towns and neighboring uh, villages, uh, they, uh, they used to supply them and help them, help them with food and other things. Uh, one amazing thing that happened at that time, that is 1400 years ago, uh, that is the Prophet encouraged to put street lights. There were no street lights in any place, in any city, neither Europe nor in the eastern cities, major cities, they had no street lights. The street lights were in Medina. And that was the first city that started the street lights. And it was actually, we call Medina al Medina al Munawwara, the city of light. And it was really physically city of light, not only spiritually city of light, but city of light, even physical way, city of uh, lights. So the Hijra uh, brought change, Hijra brought development. Hijra brought uh, progress and peace. That's what, uh, uh, that, is the, that is the legacy of Hijra. And the Muslims, wherever they go, uh, the immigrants, they go, they should try to see what we can do to make the place a better place. Not just take advantage of the place, not just enjoy the place, but rather see what we can do to make the city a, a place a better place. Uh, physically and, uh, and economically and educationally and morally and spiritually in every way we should try to do that that is the that is the spirit of hijra and that's why it's, it's a very very important event and when we start the year of hijra we should start with this understanding with this spirit that we have to learn from this so may allah swt help us Dr. Stiki, did Medina, life in Medina remain peaceful? What were some of the challenges in protecting Medina? Challenges came also from, uh, some of the challenges are also from within. Uh, there were some people who uh, were not very happy. And there were some uh, hypocrites uh, who kind of uh, looking that uh, they would have their leadership rather than the Muslims have the leadership. So they opposed the Prophet secretly. They called themselves Muslim, but really they were not Muslim. So these are called Munafiqeen. Uh, some Jewish tribes were jealous and they did not want to see the progress uh, because they had their own uh, vested interests and they felt that it was uh, threatened by the coming of Islam, by the coming of the Prophet Muhammad. So they conspired, made the conspiracy with the people of Mecca. And people of Mecca also, they did not want to see a stability in that area, uh, as I said before, because they, they didn't want the strength of Islam and they didn't want to see that their caravan trade interrupted. So they attacked, they attacked. And they had several attacks. And then the, one of the major battles that took place was the battle of Badr, which was in the second year of Hijra. Just in the second year of Hijra. And Muslims at that time were very small in number. They did not have many horses, many camels. But the Prophet told them that they should stand up and defend themselves. So there were only 313 people. And an army of 1,000 people came from Mecca, well equipped. And uh, in, the, in the area of Badr, they, they, they confronted each other. And within a few hours, they were able to defeat this army. And so that was the first victory. And that's why the day of Badr is known as the day of uh, Al-Furqan, Yom Al-Furqan, Yom Al-Taqal Jama'an. It was a decisive day. And that, that uh, battle actually decided the, the, the fate of Islam and Muslims in that area. 
So it was a very, very important battle. And next day again, they came. I mean, next, next year, they came again after that. In the third year of Hijra, they came and they came all the way to Medina. And that is known as the Battle of Uhud. And that was, uh, that battle was fought near the mountain of Uhud, which is just outside the city of Medina. And there the battle took place. And it was difficult. Uh, in the beginning, it was almost like a defeat. And the enemy were going to overcome, but then the Muslims stood and they defended the city and they defended uh, their faith. Uh, so that was the Battle of Uhud. And after the Battle of Uhud, uh, then a few years later they came uh, and they attacked again. And that was known as the Battle of Khandaq, the Battle of the Ditches. So these are challenges that were there in that. And after the Battle of Khandaq, Muslims were able to, to defeat this Meccan group. And then after that, there was some peace, some, some uh, relaxation. And there were some other struggles that happened after that. Dr. Siddiqui, you mentioned the dua of the Prophet ﷺ for Medina. What is the status of Medina? What place does it have? What place should it have in the heart of the Muslims? Yeah, this is one of the, one of the very important cities of Islam. Uh, these are the two cities. Mecca and Medina that are known as al haramain Sharifain, the noble sanctuaries, the noble sanctuaries. And of course, we have a third city, which is sort of the city of Jerusalem, the city of many prophets of Allah. So that's why the Prophet said, La tushaddu rihal illa ila salasati masajid. You should go to visit the sacred journey with the intention of sacred journey to these three masajid, uh, Masjid al-Haram, Masjid al-Madina, and the Masjid Jerusalem. And the prayer in the Masjid of uh, Masjid al-Haram is like 100,000 prayers anywhere else. And the prayers in the Masjid of the Prophet is like 1,000 prayers. And the prayers in the Masjid of Jerusalem also has a great reward and great blessing. So that's why when we go to Hajj, we go to Mecca. Hajj is performed in Mecca and around Mecca. But also we love to go to Medina. And Muslims love the city of Medina. The love of the city of Medina, there are thousands and thousands of poems and songs for the praise of the Medina. And especially the song that the children of Medina they sang at the coming of the Prophet al-Badru alayna saniyyat al The Prophet when he entered the city of Medina, the, the children of Medina, they sang, the, the moon has shined upon us uh, from the mountains of Wada'a. Wajab al-shukru alayna ma da'a lillahi da'a. That is, we have to be thankful to Allah. And we should continue thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always. So that's the, the, the love of the city of Medina. And then the people have, the Prophet ﷺ, when he died, he was buried there. So in, in his masjid, and the one of the corner of the masjid, the side of the masjid, they have the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, which is called Al-Rawda, Al-Mutahara. And that was his house where he was. He used to, this was the, one of the apartments of the Prophet ﷺ there, and uh, connected to the masjid. And so he died in that uh, apartment and he was buried there. So his grave is there. Uh, so this whole area is so sacred, so blessed, and uh, so beautiful. Thank you. May Allah call us again and again to Makkah and Medina. Inshallah. Inshallah. Dr. Yes. Siddiqui, thank you for this timely reminder and very vivid message and description of this historical backdrop. I don't see any questions at this time. So just on this beautiful note, if we may end and join you with, for a closing door. May Allah bless you all, may Allah bless everyone uh, and uh, keep us always um, on the right path. Love the city of Mecca, the city of Medina and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bless the city of Jerusalem and the people who live there 
especially our Palestinian brothers and sisters, may Allah remove their pain and their difficulties and their suffering. Uh, so we pray for all people, inshallah. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this year, the year 1442, may Allah subhanahu wa make this year the year of blessing. We remove this pandemic from our COVID-19 that uh, occupied the humanity uh, almost the whole last year. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa make this year the year of health and happiness and peace and security. Remove the difficulties of those who are, in, who are suffering in Kashmir. Remove the difficulty of those who are suffering in China, Uyghur people. Suffering of the people of uh, Burma, mm. so uh, Rohingya people. May Allah remove their suffering and suffering the people in other places, wherever they have a difficulty in Yemen and Syria and other places. Uh, may Allah bring um, Muslims to the path of faith and, and righteousness and goodness. So they live in peace and harmony and give uh, this, this message to the world, inshallah. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, fi al-akhirati hasana, wa waqina ala wa na'a. Rabbana faqfir lana, zhubana, wa tafir anna, sayyatina, wa tawakkuna ma labrara. Rabbi ghfir wa rahman, takhir wa rahman. Allahumma inna nasaluka khaira hadha al-am. Khaira hadha al-am wa khaira ma fi. ونعوذ بك من شر هذا العام وشر ما فيه اللهم إنا نسألك خيره وخير ما بعده والله we pray to you to give us the good things in this coming year and save us from the bad things in this year and Allah give us رزقا حسنا good provision and keep us and our families safe and keep us on the right path with the problem and the خير الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه محمد وآله وأصحابه وأطباعه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين شكرا يا الله بلاش يوم Allah bless you, Dr. Siddiqui. Uh, for those of you who tried to uh, tune in to uh, Facebook, we did have some technical difficulties, but uh, the, the entire recording will be posted uh, for you shortly. This is Sabiha wishing you a peaceful, safe evening. Good evening, everyone.